Welcome to curl 8.3.0. This is September 13 and uh, I just did the release. I am Daniel Stenberg. I, uh, I lead this project since a while back. Um, I work for Wolf SSL. We do curl support. Uh, get in touch if you need it. And I am going to do this release presentation today in the same style I've done many times before. First, some fun numbers about the release. Getting into a security vulnerability um, detail uh, or publication that we did today. Uh, there are a bunch of changes in this release, new things. We have done a number of bug fixes. Uh, I'll get into uh, my favorites uh, for this cycle and something about future removals and who knows, maybe something on what's coming up next. I don't really know, but uh, um, I have a few guesses. So this is release 251. And if you're if you're now paying attention, you can notice that there's a significant bump from the last re <laughs> release because then I said a completely a much lower release number. But this is the new release number because I uh, recently did a recount and uh, this number actually includes all releases from the very beginning, actually from also from including releases from b before we called it curl so it had a few na names before curl but it's sort of it's the same project really so in this cycle since the previous release we had a lot of help so 80 people have contributed reported bugs and written code and 50 of them are new 50 new names added to the thanks thanks file so we're rapidly approaching 3000 contributors and out of these 80, 40 of them wrote, well, they authored commits that we have merged into the source repository and 20 of them were new, uh, approaching 1200. And I find it kind of curious that all of these numbers, 80, 50, 40, 20, they're all uh, even and nice. So it's uh, it looks like an accident, but uh, yeah. Lots of people helping out and this cycle, this time around, it uh, was exactly seven weeks since the previous release. We typically do them every eight weeks, right? But we had a, an, an extra little patch release in, in this cycle. So hence the seven weeks since the previous release. So 9,308 days since the first curl release. <clears throat> and I, I'm, I'm going to just uh, again get into a security advisory that we reported this time i could mention that we also retracted a cve that i reported a while ago just a few releases ago but we have since figured out that it's actually not a curl security problem it's a generic uh, director access problem so i'm not going to mention that but if you look in the current set of advisories from curl you can see that the count is now at 146. It was at 146 before too, right? So we did retracted one and we have added one to this release. And I just wanted to reiterate the thing I usually say these days that if you look at curl CVs at some places like NVD, the National Vulnerability Database, you will see that they will inflate all our issues quite a lot. So if you go there, they will look much more serious than we think they are. And of course, you're free to believe whoever you want or, or approach this in your own way. But I will insist that we have the better view and the better sort of details and information about security stuff in curl. So this particular security problem I call uh, HTTP headers eat all memory. Uh, and that is exactly what it does, right? So this is a stupid uh, thing just because um, uh, a while ago, not too long ago actually, we added an API to curl that allows applications basically to access headers after the fact, right? You do the HTTP transfer and then the application can get the header details thanks to the new API. But also then you, curl has to actually keep those headers allocated, right? So that you can sort of uh, pull their contents or sort of peek into them after the fact. And of course, I was uh, not clever enough to imagine that it should have a maximum number of something. So 
if a malicious server or actually any server just keeps sending an endless stream of headers curl would basically just allocate memory to store those headers until it runs out of memory which then allows a malicious server to exercise some kind of denial of service against the curl client application something um, of course I mean headers are typically sent over the network so it might be a slow thing or might be a fast thing a lot of users will also have callbacks and can limit this themselves you know just return an error early but unless you do that there's a risk that the malicious server can actually denial of service your application or the curl command line tool by doing this now with this fix curl has a 300k maximum header total amount of header space allowed per response basically so um, if the header response uh, the headers in a single response end up larger than that it will fail the transfer and return an error and then you why <laughs> then you might uh, wonder why 300k what's kind of the arbitrary limit there and yes it's a little bit arbitrary it's that you know grab out of the air but it's also I did uh, some tests with uh, uh, our popular browsers and I watched how they do and when they cut the responses if you just keep on sending a ridiculous amount of headers to them and they limit that amount to somewhere around 250k sometimes up to one megabyte so i figured i would go somewhere in there i find it highly unlikely that anyone legitimately would ever hit this limit but if someone would do that at some point in time let's discuss how to deal with that then uh, I don't I don't imagine that this will be a serious problem for any serious use it would be a highly weird abuse case if you have that many headers or that large content of headers <clears throat> so that was the only security stuff uh, that was a uh, severity medium uh, and the fix was already merged a long time ago so if you have followed the, the code you <laughs> have not seen it maybe but it's already merged it's already been verified and it's been in, in use for a while by people so the, we have a lot of new things and in, in curl this cycle around and therefore it is a dot zero release right so uh, bear with me here's a lot of new things that we did in this cycle we added some new things for the dash w is one of my favorite command line tool options command line options it's also called dash dash write out it's a way to specify uh, extract more information from a transfer after the fact right uh, there's a bunch of variables i think there are over 50 variables now that you can output uh, so you know transfer speeds or header details or things from the transfer and now with this new percent output thing you can ask curl to put that uh, information into a specific file instead of the standard out or standard error which just you know it just increases your way to make curl uh, act the way you want to because sometimes having it to standard out and standard out is complicated for your scripting needs and now you sort of have more options on, on where to redirect info you can even redirect to multiple files with this because you can use many of these in a single dot uh, dash w argument um, so go um, and we also added a, a fairly extensive and elaborate way to add uh, to, to do variables in command lines and in config files for the curl command line tool i i did a completely separate um, blog post about this and i also talked about it in a previous video so i'm not going to get into this uh, very deep but it's a way to allow you to do for example you can easily get environment variables into config files and you can read more data from files and use them in command line arguments basically any command line argument with curl uh, this is another sort of way to really really boost your command line powers when using curl so with this um, with this added support you can really really uh, go the next level crazy with command uh, curl command lines and and make sure that everything works the way you want 
this time around we what I have been announcing for quite a while now, we have removed support for GSKit and NSS. They are two different TLS libraries. We believe them to be fairly poorly supported. Um, I mean, both within curl, but there was also very few users and few test cases. So, um, well, they both are actually a little bit differently reasoned why we remove them, but. We removed support for them. We got, uh, I think we lost if several thousand lines of code in, in the library thanks to this. And we are now down to 12 supported TLS libraries. Awesome. And of course, there are plenty of TLS libraries to select from. So go with one that is uh, working for you and is at least somewhat recent and updated. And uh, now you can build curl without the local binding support. I have this constant sort of, I'm, I'm progressing slowly uh, through curl features to make sure that you can build curl with and without a lot of different features, basically to uh, provide the ability to disable features in order to really, really make it possible to make a smaller footprint curl when you want to. So if you have a particular, you know, embedded use case system when you want to build your own curl and you want it Maybe you, you can live without, you don't need these particular features. You can build curl without them. And now you can build curl without the local binding support, which is the way when you bind the local end of a socket to an interface or to a local port range and stuff like that. So there are more things we added. We added uh, tracing now available in non-debug builds. And what this means is that for a long time, we've had this challenge. When you run into some uh, complicated network often network related problems right with curl so if something happens well when you run curl it ends up with an error maybe and you some user reports that error to curl to, to, to curl maintainers and we're sort of puzzled and we want to want the reported to tell us more about what actually happened when you ran into these problems and then we've had a bit of a limited ability to ask for tracing or better or proper logging because uh, the best logging in curl has always traditionally been when you build your own debug enabled version of curl because it had more tracing available. Now a large part of that tracing is being brought into the generic builds too. So basically we support this by a new libcurl API and there are there's a new way to set environment sort of no there's a new command line option too called trace dash dash trace config to ask for more details to get into the verbose log. Of course, all of this is documented, but I'm just saying to let you know that now when going forward, when you run into network problems with curl, we can ask you for more details and you can provide more details easily by using these steps. Sort of in, in the same spirit of what I mentioned, the security thing um, for, for HTTP headers, you know, and also then if you do redirects, curl then, you know, gets, uh, curl gets more headers from the next response, right? Or next response, the next response. If you do many redirects, it could be many headers. So you could allocate a lot. So now the default maximum follow, uh, how many redirects curl follows by default is now set to 30. So if, it, if you actually want to follow more than 30 redirects by default, uh, you have to up the limit. There's also a command line option for for this. It's existed for ever, I think, basically. Um, it is actually a very rare use case that you need to set more than this. I would say that in most cases, when you actually hit this limit, it is when there's a loop somewhere and then you're just thankful for there being a limit because otherwise it would have just, you know, gone on forever. In the curl URL API, we now have the ability to convert the other way around, basically from the puny code version to the international domain name version. You know, when you provide an, an IDA name, that's the I international version of, of a host name. Uh, when you provide that international version of the name, curl needs to convert that to puny code version in order to resolve it with DNS, right? That's, that's how it works. Uh, but what if you provide, what if you in an, app, in an application, for, for example, if you have the puny coded version of a host name, how do you get the IDN version of that host name? Previously, you couldn't. Now, with the URL API, you can actually ask curl to convert it back or 
help the application to figure out the IDN version of the Punicode name. Uh, and if you're using WolfSSL as a TLS backend, you can now ask WolfSSL to use the uh, system CA certificate store typically. You know, if you, for example, if you run on Windows or Mac OS, you can ask WolfSSL use the CA store from the system and not from the from a file. <coughs> um, this was previously only possible to do on Windows when you built uh, to use OpenSSL, but as you can see, we can slowly expand this set of when you can use this feature. So those are where the nine, I call them nine changes. There, I mean, what is a change for this bug fix? It's a little bit of a vague uh, separation sometimes. Anyway, uh, we have then 174 logged bug fixes apart from those nine changes. So out of those 174, I, most of them are, are fairly silly, I would say, uh, or small, so we don't have to care about them. But I have, I've gone through the list and I added a few of them uh, that I think is worthy of a highlight. Uh, so let's go through them. I think there are 21 in my list here, so deep breath. Uh, okay, let's start out. We started by, well, I fixed... Um, the alt service response headers is a HTTP header response where the server says my service is also available over there um, on another server perhaps with another protocol per, for uh, x number of seconds into the future and we didn't support plain IPv6 address um, host names in there kind of stupid well I, I don't think actually alt service is originally intended really to, to be used that way, but now we support it. Someone mm, ran into the problem that curl didn't accept a leading white space on the first HTTP response header. And really, this is not how an HTTP one response, it's an HTTP one response header, I should say. So that's not how it's supposed to look like. A, a leading white space could uh, exist on the, on the other headers, and that's then it's uh, sort of what they would called you know a folded header it means a continuation from the header on the line before but anyway so it actually the, the standards says it can't actually exist in a leading white space on the first response headers but of course it turns out that there are a few servers out there that are sending those and those are silently ignored and accepted by a lot of other popular browser clients so now curl accepts them as well it turned out that uh, we implemented this option completely wrong. The HA proxy client IP, it should set the source IP, it did set the destination, which was completely wrong and not that at all as documented, now it's fixed. We had a rather subtle HTTP2 problem. So basically when you do HTTP2 and, and we do a multiplexing, you know, so we can do a lot of transfers over the same connection, but we can, you, a typical connection, well, every HTTP2 connection also has a maximum number of allowed um, streams over the same connection. So there's the max stream value base that's typically set to a rather large value, but it could also be a rather small value. It depends on, on the server and, and everything. And if so, if you do more transfers with curl then can fit in a single connection curl will actually create a second connection and start doing transfers over that as well if you do a lot of parallel transfers and setting up that second connection it would easily try to reuse or use that for multiplexing before it was completely set up so it then made a few transfers or one transfer fail in in a really complicated way and usually very hard to detect since at that particular point in time, you would have typically hundreds of parallel transfers. And if you fail, how, how do you actually <laughs> figure out what's going on? And speaking of that, we also then fixed a bunch of uh, related things on when sending large HP requests, actually. And we've solved problems regarding to large HP uh, requests in all HTTP version handlers really both one two and three 
slightly different fixes and problems, but we will have we fix problems in those areas. So as you can tell, we've had a fun release cycle this time, <clears throat> and I, I uh, decided to up the fun even more. So I actually rewrote most or all of the application of the documentation to present tense instead of future tense. Basically, a lot of our documentation says curl will do this. When set, curl will do this. And now it says cur curl does this. Basically, it sets this value. It performs this instead of will perform it. Uh, it's, it's a subtle change. It's ridiculous, maybe. But I figure it's, it's a more direct. It's a more easy language. It actually makes it, I think it makes it easier to read. It was a little bit painful to go through. But basically, I just grepped for will through the entire documentation and made sure that there's no mention of the word will in any documentation, and then it's much better. Uh, I I don't know when this started to happen, but someone discovered that if you would do, you know, man curl in a typical man page viewer on any Linux distribution, possibly other Unisix as well, the man tool would display a lot of those hyphens, dashes, minuses uh, as Unicode hyphens in the curl. So, you know, a, a command line option like uh, dash dash user dash agent, uh, it would actually use the Unicode hyphen when displayed by the man command. And why does that matter? It matters because then you can't search for user agent, min you know, user minus agent because it's not the same character right so the the man tool would show them in a different character than i thought and it was I thought it would use and, and sort of what it's expected to use uh, very annoying uh, so um uh, that is fixed now so now you can search better and it, it, another sort of follow-up is that if you would then um, for example, to copy and paste from the curl man page, it would also do copy and paste with the wrong characters, with all, which would also be wrongly interpreted if you copy it into command line. So now the, gen the tool that generates the man page now completely um, properly escapes all of these so that they will appear as proper ASCII minus bytes and you can copy and paste and you can search for them, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I lowered the the timeout uh, for doing name results with CARES to two thousand milliseconds from five thousand. Which um, and this is an, a change that CARES is doing themselves in their code, so it, it'll be by default anyway in in, in future releases of CARES. Basically, because uh, networks these days we lose a lot of time just waiting when we have too high uh, timeouts. We got a lot of polished on the CMake build system this time around. So um, I, I, I mentioned 10 separate improvements. So uh, I don't have them detailed here, but we fixed uh, a lot of changes that basically were present only or, or detailed features only present in the configure build are now also available in the CMake build. So we are slowly expanding and improving the CMake build in case you're you're one of those who want to build curl with CMake, which admittedly is a pretty big bunch of people these days. We also fixed one of these awesome build fixes for such a lovely legacy platform such as HPUX. So this, with, if you build curl with this ACC compiler on HPUX, and, uh, and in this case, I, I think it was related to 32-bit versus 64-bit builds, something like that, but now, it's fixed, so now it builds better. Whew. As you can see, lots of fun changes. Uh, we, uh, I, I changed a little thing here. So when you connect, when you ask curl to connect to hostname, you know it will resolve to a number. May, today, a single hostname might be represented by you know a bunch of IP addresses, right? And if you then use a timeout for those IP addresses we end up with this fun challenge. How do you actually distribute that timeout on different 
connect attempts because you don't want to spend the entire time out on the first IP only if it would be just you know sitting there and swallowing all of the packages packages if you have for example four addresses so therefore curl has always traditionally if there is more than one IP left to try use half of the of the uh, timeout for this IP and then save the rest for the next attempt and that that's fine but it, but if you then set a very very short timeout d doing that um, splitting would make it a very even more short timeout to, to do for, for this attempt so basically this half halving of the timeout because there are more IPs to try to try we stop that halving that having when there is less than 600 milliseconds left so because then it's I deem that it's too short to to play around with the, sort of splitting the time and it's better to spend the entire 600 milliseconds on that single IP address basically trying to help people to connect to um, hosts when they have a short timeout to host with many IP addresses it was also a little bit uh, fun that we actually when you asked curl to connect to IPv6 addresses only it actually still resolved IPv4 addresses completely unnecessary because it wouldn't use them someone noticed when they made an um, artificial delay for the IPv4 responses and <laughs> curl would wait for them and you know and then don't use them anyway so of course it shouldn't do that now it's only asking for IPv6 addresses because that's the only thing it's going to use uh, we ended up in a fun sort of race edge case sometimes when curl would send a transfer and the connection would it would send a, a request actually the the initial HTTP one request so you know send and before it was complete it had completed the body the request body the connection would be closed uh, and that could end up in curl not detecting that closure and just assuming that it would keep sending or not anyway just getting stuck in, in an um, not detecting the closed transfer it was a bit timing sensitive and it is it, but it could happen and um, it should be better now we the AWS SIG v4 authentication was polished in in, in I think in, in two different ways at least maybe three so at but for example we now canonicalize the query part of the URL as it turns out the the AWS SIG v4 standard says you should it should be can you should be formatted in a particular way and the 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 query part should actually be sorted in the in the query as well so it was a little bit of a juggling there but uh, now we do that and we also when doing this I discovered that we actually required TLS to be used to use the AWS SIG v4 authentication which was a mistake because it doesn't really require that and by removing this re re requirement it was also easier to write test cases <clears throat> oh okay so let's continue here then uh, out um, I moved and this um, so I moved the just uh, the the internal mime post is what you use when you want to do a multipod form post for example with HTTP uh, and we moved that data the internal representation of that between two different places in in uh, the handles basically to make it survive better when you do uh, redirects or uh, because it turns out that <laughs> it fa in, in some cases when you do a form post it curl needs to redirect and do it again when you do a redirect depending on the redirect and depending on features but uh, because of how things worked uh, it didn't work unless I fiddle around with the data so this basically uh, fixes uh, form multipod multipod form posts when doing a redirect and curl needed to do a rewind and send it again on the new request some uh, we extended the basically the, the expiry dates for all the for a lot of curl tests for cookies are now set way beyond 2038 basically to verify that the, we, there's no 
2038 issues in the cookie date parsing logic. So basically all those uh, expire dates are now set to the year 2500 or something, which means that if you, if you actually change your year setting to something after 2038, right, and run the entire curl test suite, it works and, and so that there are no failures if your system can handle uh, dates after 2038, which requires then a time t variable that is larger than 32 bit. So, yeah. <coughs> Uh, we <laughs> so talking then about future times uh, after 2038. We did not handle file dates before 1970 correctly. If you use the dash Z option, the dash Z says is a time condition, right, over HTTP. But and if it's a file name, it gets that file from that local file name, and it would not send the correct date if that file name or that file had a modification date set before 1970 now it does i mean then you ask how could you get a file date set before 1970 well it's easy for you to just change it right but uh, you could also in theory actually run a system where you have files that old uh, we fixed a timestamp called timer start transfer uh, it, it, it misbehaved in some subtle detail on, on the first send it should be better now the curl URL dup function actually did not completely duplicate the entire URL contents because it, it missed the zone ID, uh, silly omission. Now it's better. Now it uh, also duplicates that. So now it's a perfect clone until someone says something else. And finally, uh, the last one to mention this time around, uh, there are of course <laughs> a lot of other bugs mentioned in the changelog, so go there and read about it. But the last one I'm going to talk uh, mention here for you today is the don't set SNI if the hostname is an IP address for quick, which uh, is a bit silly because this is how we've done it for, for TLS for a very long time. So the regular TLS done over TCP, then we have a check. If it's an IP address, don't set the SNI because that's it's actually says so in the TLS standards don't set the SNI field should not be an IP address. So if it's an IP address you're connecting to, you're not supposed to use the SNI field at all. And now we don't over quick either as we were supposed to do. Of course, you typically don't often use quick to an IP address. So I guess that's why nobody saw it before now. Quick then of course being used for HTTP 3. So if you, if you, USA, if you then go HTTP 3 to an IP address, the SNI field should be blank or not set at all, actually, I think. We are going to remove a few things going forward. And now we're, we, as I mentioned, we remove those two TLS libraries in this release. So now we have just smaller things left. We're going to remove support building with the legacy MingW version uh, this month, as you can see. So in the next release, this is going to be gone. Uh, basically, nobody is using that anymore. So it's it's not a big deal, I think. And if you're using it, you really should have been upgrading this since forever. So it's not a big, it's not really our fault. So you should go with something more modern and better supported. Uh, we are going to then also, also remove the space separated no proxy patterns next year, but it's a long time away and it's a more of a subtle minor change actually in, in behavior. In order, the, the reason we remove support for space separated ones is to make it more streamlined with how many other implementations do it. So we, you should really have them comma separated if you want to, them to be more standard, more compliant with how others work. Okay, going forward then, this is version 8.3.0, right? The ones we shipped today, the, 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 thing, the version we shipped today and the next release we're going to do, I say is likely to become 8.4.0 unless we do a patch release before then. But the next release we want to do is going to be, probably is going to be 8.4.0. We're probably going to bump the minor version number of the minor version number, of course, because there are changes pending. So there are changes we want to do and changes people want to land and then we bump the minor version number. So some of the things that might show up will or might, we don't know just yet because we're not in the future yet. So 
I mentioned IPFS for a very long time and it looks like the IPFS gateway support is coming in the next release. Uh, IPFS gateway is a, specific, is a particular way to access IPFS through a gateway. So it's not actually the IPFS protocol, it's a gateway into IPFS. But it makes it possible for you to use IPFS URLs as long as you know a IPFS gateway to use to access that uh, uh, URL. And it looks, uh, I think the, the, the PR for this looks to be in good shape. So it's, I'd say it's uh, highly likely to actually land. There's this ongoing discussion I answered question in the thread today about how to backpedal a little bit for curl, how to curl rejects all host names that contains the dot onion as a uh, tilde because there's an RFC that says that's how we should do. But apparently um, there are solutions and users who depend and to them it's apparently very important to to support dot onion names anyway because they sort of they implement this in a different layer and then they get very upset that we broke it even though the tor people themselves are behind the rfc that says that we should ignore or <coughs> not leak dot onion names because if you resolve the dot onion names over your regular dns server you leak that knowledge that oh you are actually resolving dot onion host names uh, and the whole host name too so it's a bad thing to do anyway we're discussing exactly how to to ask curl to not block them but it's um, we're not quite there yet i'm i encourage everyone to participate in the in the discussion and ideally hopefully we will reach a solution that everyone is happy with going forward so let's work and uh, uh, work on that we have this new API proposed called curl multi get handle handles. Actually, I think it's a typo there. I think it's supposed to be plural because uh, when you're using the multi handle in, in lib curl, you're adding easy handles to a multi handle. Basically, you're adding many individual transfers to that multi handle, right? So you add, 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 and then that single trans uh, ha multi handle can do a lot of parallel transfers. Uh, and the plan is to provide this pretty simple API to just ask curl to provide a list back with all the easy handles that are added, have been added to the multi-handle. Um, because it turns out uh, it's a decent feature uh, and people want it and we don't provide that info today. R right now, if you want, <laughs> you pretty much have to keep that list yourself. And it seemed just unnecessary when curl actually knows it. So it could just provide here. Well, here are all the handles we know are added. There's a PR for uh, this command line option called decode remote name. It's a effort to URL decode the file name. You know, if you use, for example, the dash uppercase O or other things, you know, the dash upcase o option with curl says use the file name part from the url to save as a file name but it doesn't do any url decoding so if you're using percent 20 percent 3a percent you know blah 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 in in the file name part of the url that will become become actually part of the file name but with this option you ask curl to don't use the percent code things in my file name decode it first looks to be a a decent PR, uh, I we might be able to merge this for the next release. Just four different things that are on the agenda. I'm sure they will show up others and, and so on and we will open the feature window soon and then we might be able to merge this if they, if they look good enough and have test cases and are documented and so on. But we will work together and, and we will do that. The next release then, if things go as planned, which of course they will uh, will be shipped on November 8th and that's going to be 8.4.0 and of course you can always go to this URL to read the pending release notes for the for the future next release and as a reminder we have this 8 week release cycle 
and funnily enough it was seven weeks since the previous release right because we do it like this we have a release wednesday that's today and that's and then we have this 10 days cool down period this period also allows us to possibly make a follow-up patch release if we need to and last time we needed to and then in, in that case we can do a patch release within this cooling down period we don't merge anything uh, no new features and no new sort of changes in this period and why when these 10 days have gone and everything looks fine you know n nothing alarming has been reported we're all sort of comfortable with going forward we open the floodgates and then there's a 21 days feature window in which during which we allow new features changes to get merged if the PRs are fine right if we have test cases and documentation and, and everything is looking good and we we all agree this is how we want to expand or change curl we do that f during those 21 days and then after 21 days in those green days we shut the window again and then we have the feature freeze period 21 days of not merging features or changes just fixing bugs stabilizing polishing cleaning up you know Put, getting the broom out and make sure that everything is good so basically this is today to, uh, September 13 if everything goes well September 23 we open the feature window and then we close it again on October 14 and then BAM November 8 we have another release Wednesday and then we take another lap on this release cycle and we go on and on and on and on and on forever right if you have any problems you want curl support commercial support from small support to big support from little to a lot get in touch if you find any problems bugs typos issues quirks uh, something that you think we should fix or improve report it to us here on github on curl slash curl issues and we will work on them and tell us which version of curl you're using when you're reporting a problem it's actually a form so if you just follow the form it will ask for it if you think suspect or or have spotted something that looks like a security problem please file a issue here on hacker1.com curl and we will reward you with real money if it if we actually agree that it is a security problem and we have paid over sixty thousand dollars so far in our bug bounty program i, I think we're actually up to sixty five thousand now i haven't checked lately so you could be one of those <clears throat> and of course curl is what it is thanks a lot thanks to these great uh, official sponsors um, they are all helping out in different ways many of them financially just chipping in money so that we can spend the money on things that we uh, deem is necessary to run the project and and push us forward in development wise hosting wise service wise thank you everyone and um, yes, this is curl. We are on curl.se since um, a while back and there's everything you need to know is there. So thank you for this time and uh, enjoy curl.8.3.0. Bye.